So it is Saturday, and I thought I would catch up on some of the rumor mill stuff sort of here, as we do have some bad news, but then also some good news, potentially, for Nintendo fans, or people just wondering what exactly Nintendo's plans are as we go through the year, because at this time, they have a few games still lined up over the next two and a half months, and... That's kind of it, and after we heard that apparently their Switch 2 or their next-gen device had some planned shift behind the scenes and it now moving into 2025, there's definitely a gap right in front of us when it comes to releases, and now it does appear we may not be seeing a direct for them for maybe longer than people were expecting, at least based on some previous discussions. We're going to go over that over here today. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Now, I didn't really have much of this discussion in Newswave, mostly because some of the information that, that's going around right now is a, kind of borderline still. And to be frank, I do see a lot of comments that just seem to be getting tired of like the Nintendo Switch 2 and Nintendo Direct Talk, although I do question it that at times because it seems like people do like to click on those videos to hear something about it. So I figured, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll just put it into a Saturday video and we'll go over all the updates here. Previously, we had the the reports around Nintendo's next generation device missing their internal target of holiday 2024, moving into 2025. Right now, the belief is first half of 2025 for release of it, but Bloomberg didn't rule out the possibility of it falling even further into the year and I mean, it sounds weird to say now, but holiday 2025, I believe Nintendo may just try to reenact the the Switches, the original Switches launch in March, that being this time in 2025 as opposed to 2017, which, hey, eight-year run for the system as the primary focus, that's pretty good. It probably will run for 10 years total with a cross-gen period of a year and a half to two years, sure, but... There was some thought around a direct in April this month. Well, we're about halfway through the month now, and nothing's really materialized. And I'm not even talking about just Nintendo themselves announcing it. Think about how, as we get through a month where we're expecting a direct, you'll start to hear some rumors, start, you know, just kind of rumbling a bit, some discussion around this, more and more kind of ramping up. We've really had nothing. And now we have Brazil, who was the original person who, well, the person who reported the original story on the next-gen device getting pushed into next year, where then all these outlets showed up and started corroborating it. But he says, hey, everyone didn't want to leave you hanging for the entire month, so here I am. This is over on Famaboards. Goes on to say, I no longer believe we'll get a direct this month. Now, they do mention they believe that event info that they had shared uh, like a month or so ago was already out of date at that point. And it wouldn't shock me if... So here's the situation with a lot of the times where these this information will just kind of get put out there, information, plans that are in place at one point, but they can also shift and change in the background. It, it, it's very fluid with a lot of the, the scheduling and plans for game companies because... It's, it's not hard for a game to miss a milestone here or there in development, and they just push it out into the future further. Especially if it hasn't been announced, it's much easier to do that behind the scenes than if the game is announced and they already kind of have promises in place that investors are relying on. They're like, well, we wanted to have this big time release. We're going to just push it out there. In this case, Nintendo, especially with how the Switch has shockingly solid momentum considering it is in its eighth year right now uh, for the, the platform, especially in Japan, where this past week we had reports that it sold over 70,000 units. Uh, they don't really seem to be in a, a big hurry right now to jump to their next generation device, even though I think most of us look at the current Switch and go, you know what, wouldn't be a bad idea to get some sort of technical upgrade here so some of these games can run better in terms of resolution or frame rate, especially if the thing is backwards compatible. It'd be awesome to be able to play the current games we have now, just, at, again, better experiences in terms of the, the technical side of things. And I'm sure people will probably give uh, Brazil here a hard time, but to be honest, if somebody puts out information like this well in advance and then they get new information that comes up and people go, oh, it's very convenient. I mean, I'd rather them just... Put it out there, update it, own it, and be like, you know what? It, hey, it di didn't work out how I had originally heard. Things change, and it, they, they legitimately can change behind the scenes. Not every time, of course. Some people 
don't actually have info, but in this case, it seems like they did, and when you have information like that around Nintendo's next-gen device, their next piece of hardware, it's not hard to believe that they would also have information around Nintendo's next event. And that's not necessarily their big blowout event to show off the next device. It could be a direct that would just set up the second half of 2024, which, yeah, th there's probably going to be a direct at some point this year. Shocking. I know. Now it's kind of coming down to, well, when exactly would Nintendo have this next direct? Because I, I think a lot of people are expecting it to happen in June because we've been pretty much conditioned with E3 happening every summer, well, up until recently, that that's when these companies tend to plan things out. I mean, it also makes sense. You're about halfway through the year and you want to start setting up the second half of the year and then also maybe the start of the following year. But that was predicated on the idea that there was a big event with E3. And while there is Summer Games Fest, I, I don't believe that's to the level at this time of what E3 was in its heyday, which, I mean, really was like six or seven years ago, I guess. Uh, but looking at what Nintendo has in front of them now with Mar Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, uh, we have Luigi's Mansion 2 HD and Endless Ocean. Those are the three titles they have lined up for the next two and a half months. We'll run them to the end of June. And then there's just, there's nothing in front of them. So you figure, okay, in the next uh, two months, maybe, we should have a direct. And Nintendo should at least have some sort of roadmap planned out for most likely the rest of this year when it comes to releases for the current Switch. To me, that makes complete sense as we are sort of in this in-between time where they're going to be transitioning to the next-gen system. And most of us figure their big first-party studios internally have been working on games for their next platform so that it has a solid 12 to 18 month run when the system first comes out of release after release after release. Again, very similar to what they did with the original Switch. Now, we do have some indicators right now that could give us an idea as to when Nintendo could just say something, like just start discussing the, the future and what's ahead for them as a company. And that would start with their investors report where they will talk about the previous fiscal year that just wrapped up at the end of March. That will be released May 7th, and they should have a full Q&A that will follow up. And they will have to have guidance for the upcoming fiscal year or the, really the fiscal year we're in right now to where they'll talk about what their targets are for the current Switch hardware. And that will tell us a lot about what Nintendo's thoughts are going forward because if they show up and it's like a good bit lower than where they've been with the Switch recently, which is like 15 or so million, which they did raise the forecast. But if it is a bit lower than that, then you're going to start thinking, well... They'll probably be working to manufacture their next system as well, and you'll see focus kind of shift off the current one and onto the, the new system, probably to wrap up this current fiscal year at the end of uh, March 2025. So we will want to keep an eye on that and Q&A, as I'm sure investors, I mean, if uh, people online were all talking about this, uh, you know, people who are heavily invested in Nintendo and, I mean, really wanting to get to that next big release for their new generation platform, uh, they're going to certainly be asking some questions. And it's not like they haven't in the past. They've asked and Nintendo has been like, oh, we're, we're always working on new hardware. But they have, at times, kind of given a little bit of information here and there, a few nuggets to just kind of really tied the... The, the investors over at least somewhat. And I, I kind of feel like they're getting to a point where they'll be putting out even more information with some of these answers because I do think we're getting pretty close, go figure, to Nintendo finally talking about what, what's going to follow up the current Switch. Now, there is something else here. So if there's no E3, okay, Nintendo can technically go whenever they want in terms of a, a direct or a presentation. I don't think they're very interested in Summer Games Fest because... What they've done previously there is pretty much nothing other than just advertising, commercials for releases, that sort of thing, sure. But in terms of meaningful announcements, hasn't been anything very notable. So I wouldn't be shocked, and I'm just throwing this out there, if Nintendo, instead of going in June, had a plan for maybe late May. And something's been sort of floating around that's made me consider this at least, okay? And I don't want to say this is something that's absolute, but... I'm getting a bit more confidence in what Jeff Grubb mentioned a little while ago about Metroid Prime 4 and how there was discussions around marketing ramping up in May. And this is just 
again, stuff kind of going around right now, but it actually wouldn't surprise me if Metroid Prime 4 showed up maybe ahead of when people would expect a June Direct to happen, which does make me wonder if that's when Nintendo would have their big Direct, not necessarily in June, maybe a few weeks earlier than expected. Again, I wouldn't necessarily run with that as confirmation because really there's going to be a probably a two or three week window where Nintendo will have their Direct, most likely somewhere in the end of May into like the first couple weeks in, in June again as expected. But I guess the good news here is I, I think we're pretty close to Metroid Prime 4 being shown that's what i'll say i i have a pretty good feeling about about this one and that's exciting obviously for metroid fans and it's probably expected at this point although that seems to be a major prediction constantly going into any direct oh is this it for metro metro prime 4 is finally going to be shown i do think at the next like full direct general direct from nintendo it's going to be there and i wouldn't be shocked if it closes out the next Nintendo Direct, and then we start thinking about, okay, when are they going to finally reveal their next-gen device? I think it's later this year. Like, I, I don't, I don't, originally I was thinking June as, like, kind of that, again, that E3 time period, but I, I sort of think the plans changing behind the scenes means that we'll probably see some sort of trailer get put out August or September or something, and then we roll into the first half of 2025 with some big presentation, some big event where they show it off and then they roll in two months later to its official release. So I think that's what 2024 is going to look like right now for Nintendo. I, I'm i kind of thinking Metroid Prime 4 is their holiday title. I think you're going to see some other smaller games thrown in there. I, I think there's going to be a new Fire Emblem game, which I mean, that should be pretty exciting. And I wouldn't be shocked if you saw a couple of Zelda remasters like Wind Waker, Twilight Princess being a bundle that kind of thing. But let me know what you guys think about all this down below. Now looking past April, it seems, when it comes to any kind of direct and uh, maybe into May or June. What do you think about Nintendo's 2024 as it stands right now with uh, the big three titles coming up? Endless Ocean, Paper Mario, and then Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.